Good evening, dear participants. You are all welcome to our event. I'm Azlem, one of the research assistants of our department. Thank you for being here with us tonight. And I wish everyone a fun and informative night. Tonight is the 10th of Katudai online seminar series. And I'm glad to announce tonight's speaker, who is actually the host, Assistant Professor Dr. Rashida Da Akbash. She's one of the former students who became a lecturer in our department. Rashida Ojam is going to give us a speech titled with How to Promote Learner Autonomy. And please feel free to write related questions in chat box whenever you want. They are going to be answered by the speaker at the end. And a reminder, please do not forget to fill the form to get the certificate of participation when it is shared in the chat box as well. But before Rajida Hojam, let us listen our head of department, Professor Dr. Naji Karyoğlu. Uh, Özlem, uh, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you once again uh, tonight. And so it's a great honor also to welcome Assist, assistant Professor Dr. Rashida Akbash. And uh, the topic is quite interesting. This is a very, uh, let's say, timely topic that matters all of us. Uh, perhaps most of the fundamental problems we are facing or we suffer from somehow are related to either to this concept or lack of this concept. So I know for many of us, this concept, learning autonomy or autonomous learning is, is an important concept we are quite familiar with. We know this, this term very well. We always speak in favor of this uh, term, uh, but judging from my own experience of 34 years, but I can say there is a big somehow an difference between what we say we believe and what we do uh, in class. Because as long as we have the kind of classroom where students rely on teachers to a large extent, uh, so as long as, long as students uh, seem to avoid taking the responsibility for the learning, so we cannot talk about uh, learning autonomy, the reason probably we do not know how to make it. So though we very often articulate the word autonomous learning or learning autonomy, but the pictures we get from the classrooms uh, just say the opposite, which means so most of our students uh, are heavily dependent on us. And the reason perhaps, so we know this is a great issue, we know this is a very fundamental big problem, but maybe we do not know how to overcome this issue. So uh, Rashto Jam, uh, I'm sure will be discussing and also suggesting some sort of ideas and practical things which can be somehow uh, of value to use in classroom. So if I introduce Rashida Akbash, Rashida started and uh, her BA degree in the Department of uh, English Language uh, and Literature at Jumhuriyet University. And, and then transferred to Credit Technical University and for two years and the, she went to the Department of Anglistic and uh, Americanistic at Technology University of Chambers in Germany for one year. And uh, she obtained her MA degree in applied linguistics and PhD in the same in the department. She also uh, stayed uh, in various, in, uh, let's say, uh, European countries and universities and abroad. And her, uh, MA thesis uh, was about the, the relationship between the learned autonomy, language engagement, and academic uh, achievement. So this is the reason why she is uh, one of the right person to talk about this issue. So this is the reason why we are here to listen to your jump. So uh, when it comes to her PhD topic, and, uh, and uh, I can say Rashida was the first person to initiate online ESP program for the students of Faculty of Medicine some years ago. So our topic was designing, developing, and delivering an online medical English course with a focus on ESP and online learning. Uh, but she at the same time developed a kind of course book which uh, uh, could have been used with the students. So she worked in the past as a research assistant at the Department of English uh, Language and Literature. 
Now she's working as an assistant professor in our department. So and she, she's interested in ELT in general, but if you, if you ask me what are the very specific and the areas she's interested in, I can say, and uh, she has a lot of less interest and in also uh, public, wide publications on the issue of English for a specific purpose and plus educational technologies and also technology enhanced language teaching, social linguistic individual learning differences. And uh, Rashid is married and with three uh, nice and lovely and, and, and sons. Uh, Rashid, uh, the floor uh, is yours. Again, thank you very much. And it's very kind of you to, uh, again, be with us uh, with this topic. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, my dear professor. First of all, I, I want to welcome all of you. Uh, have a nice evening. And I thank you for your participation, for your sharing this time with us here. And also, I, it's needless to say, but uh, it is an honor for me to be a part of this uh, academic uh, event. So it makes me very excited, feel excited, and also feel privileged. Okay, tonight, uh, today, I will focus on the issue about learner autonomy, but um, at first, I want to have a, a brainstorming session with you. Okay, let's let's have a brainstorming session with you. So here you will see another slide, and you will have an um, yes uh, link there, menti.com menti.com or okay please go to that website and use that code so as to answer the question that you can see on the screen yeah. can you see the link can you see the codes easily is it available on the screen by the way yes yes we can okay. follow you okay right And I kindly ask all of you to go to that page and share your ideas, okay? Maybe while you are dealing with that issue, I also want to give you a brief uh, introduction uh, about the content of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, to, today, I don't want to um, uh, give you a brief list about what to do uh, how, so as to become your students autonomous, but I actually want you to have kind of um, comprehensive idea about what learner autonomy is, why we are dealing with this issue, how you can manage uh, to become an autonomous teacher at, at the end as well. And by uh, providing some kind of theoretical information, I also want you to um, wield a bridge between theory and practice, practice because uh, as I see here, you most of you are practitioners, most of you are practicing teachers, in-service teachers. So uh, you will, I hope you will have a chance to uh, apply what you have from this seminar in uh, to to the apply all these uh, kind of information to your uh, context, teaching context. So uh, I will give you uh, a kind of uh, way to uh, build a bridge be uh, between theory and practice. So if you have completed that. Um, Yes, that form, let's say, I want to go to that page right now and I want to share that with you. Actually, when I was preparing this uh, presentation here, my aim was to, um, was to um, create a bird cloud here at the very beginning of this seminar, but here, um, so as to suit this to the nature of autonomy, uh, being an uh, autonomous, okay, uh, so as to be an autonomous uh, particip 
participants here, I want to uh, make you a part of this uh, slide as well. So as you see here in the screen, when you uh, flap the, when you answer the question, how would you describe what I mean three words? The screen is changing because your answers make uh, create this word cloud. So here, as you see, uh, you have yes. Uh, when I see your word cloud, you see the word cloud on the screen right now. Can you see it? Yes. Any feedback? I need any feedback. Can you see the word cloud right now on the yes, screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Okay, you see, uh, yes, you have some uh, keywords like independence, responsibility, and freedom and control. So they're in the center, and it seems that yes, it seems that you are uh, you haven't yes, you are familiar with the issue. Uh, yes, self determination, self government, and self control and awareness and discover and consciousness. So you see this word um, cloud is belonging to us. So we are, yes, collaborating and creating this great word cloud here. So let me go on with my seminar again, uh, my presentation, what comes next. Okay. So uh, as I said you previously, I want to give you an account of uh, why we are dealing with this issue here. So in our teaching, in our daily life as well, our ultimate goal is to be uh, successful and happy at, uh, at the end. Okay, so in teaching context, every learner wants to be a successful learner at and every teacher wants every teacher wants the, their students to be a successful uh, student. But throughout this term, throughout this semester, uh, throughout this seminar, I'm sorry, I want to prefer to I want, I prefer to use uh, the term learner because it suits the natural learner autonomy. So here, uh, every uh, autonomous learner, depending on the uh, research, okay, every autonomous learner is considered to be a maximally successful learner. And the, also the research shows that there, there is a positive relationship between academic performance and learner autonomy. And um, creating an, yes, creating an environment in which learners develop autonomously is of great importance to us and to everyone as well in order to, in order to raise students motivation and confidence level Rashid Hocam, you muted yourself. Actually, I didn't mute myself, but I didn't. I don't know why it happened. Okay, now we can hear you. So, uh, I don't know when it, uh, yes, it was stopped. Would you please remind me that point? Because I was talking to myself. It Hocam, seems, your so, last few sentences I don't know where I, was was missing only. Okay. It only went for a few seconds. Okay, so, okay. Okay, so creating an environment in which learners develop autonomously is great, uh, is of great importance in order to raise students' motivation and confidence level. Since motivated and confident learners can lead themselves to become successful learners, not only inside, but also outside of the class. So. Another focus here is being successful, not only inside the class, but also out of the class. So learner autonomy is ensuring uh, you, or autonomy is helping you to become an autonomous learner every time, everywhere. So here maybe we can compare the concept of learner and student. And uh, I, I know that 
of uh, uh, some of you, uh, I mean, the audience is coming from, yes, some of you are students, uh, some of you are prospective teachers, I mean, and some of our students have no clear idea uh, about the distinction between uh, students and learners. So here, autonomy, the uh, importance of autonomy is ob uh, uh, obviously uh, presented how, so we can compare it by, uh, we can compare it, uh, we can compare the uh, words student and learner. And here we can say that learner is always actively engaged in uh, learning process and they are mostly internally uh, motivated and uh, they are co considered as independent uh, thinkers and they are focusing on their learning so when you use the word student student is uh, something about the classroom context okay so uh, students uh, focusing on the instructions given by the teacher. Students uh, are uh, mostly active uh, when they are addressed by the teachers. So uh, when you compare the uh, concept learner and students, so we should prefer to have some learners because yes, they are uh, active every time. They are supposed to be active every time. So at the end, we can say that an autonomous learner, uh, if uh, they are autonomous, they will have a success at the end. So why uh, don't we uh, try to uh, make our students a learner and as learner auton autonomous learner at the end? So here um, I have, yes, I have another, um, question for you. How do you feel about uh, the matter? I mean, how uh, you are knowledgeable about the uh, matter, learning autonomously or, or autonomous learner or uh, learner autonomy? Yes, you here right now have another link and uh, you have another uh, quote. So I kindly ask you to go to that page again and uh, fill up that question. Rashida, sorry for interrupting. I don't want to be rude, but some of the audience uh, just are following us through uh, YouTube, so they may have enough chance to click the uh, let's say link and also. Mm -hmm. so could you please consider and uh, this fact in, in your presentation, please? Okay. Okay. Okay, maybe some of you uh, can fill up that and then we can go on. So uh, it is just for, yes, for the sake of uh, doing this presentation. Uh, yes, uh, enjoyable for you as well, because throughout the seminar, I will have a lot to share with you. But at the very beginning, I want you to have a kind of reflection about your knowledge. So it's all about uh, autonomy again. So here, okay, I, I have this, uh, I have the results from uh, your, yes, I have the results and I'm seeing that on my screen right now and most of you, yes, says that, okay. They are somewhat knowledgeable about the issue. And I hope at the end of this seminar, we'll, you will have, uh, yes, you will have, uh, yes, much more, yes, knowledge, knowledge about the issue. So here, I'm, uh, yes, I'm observing the uh, progress in the uh, presentation, uh, in this uh, form. I mean the question form. So, but right now I don't want to share it. So let's go on, okay, let's go on and let's talk about what uh, autonomy is. So uh, I want to talk about its origin so as to make you uh, much more familiarized with the nature of uh, learner autonomy as, as well. 
So uh, when you have a look at the issue, okay, um, some papers, you will see that it's coming from quality of self-governance or self-direction within a broader community. So that means, that means uh, I have some notifications again on my screen. So that's why I'm stopping. I'm sorry about that. Okay, that means uh, autonomy is about self-governance, self-direction and within a broader community. That means you are not single, you are not alone, you are living in a community, you and it is also valid for the uh, educational context. Okay, but when you uh, have a look at the studies, you see that the concept of autonomy, learner autonomy, is not primarily uh, originated from educational literature. So, uh, in fact, it is um, integrated by the innovations in society. Uh, towards the years of 1960s, because of the political and social moments in society, the uh, ideas, individualism, freedom, and contribution to society have gained some importance. So within time, this kind of mo movement affected uh, uh, educational uh, movement as well so we see some differences we see some changes in society not uh, we, we uh, not be but may, then uh, the people uh, uh, experience this okay but uh, here uh, as a result of this kind of movements we had some learner centered pedagogies adult education uh, gained an importance, self-access centers and self-directed learning, distance learning and tandem learning in study of both programs and co computer assisted language learning and open learning grew into the world of education as a result of these kind of moments. So nowadays we are experiencing a pandemic. So uh, it is very easy to understand that some movements in society have kind of influence in uh, other parts of society uh, like as we are experiencing right now, we are, uh, yes, exchanging our ideas online. So uh, it, the movement in society uh, has totally changed the education here. So it was the same. Maybe when we were you know, reading the, these pages, okay, uh, it's sometimes difficult to, for us to understand how it happened, but now we are experiencing it. Okay, so uh, learner autonomy is primarily suggested for those, uh, for the adults who are uh, confined or who had some kind of difficulty to have an access to uh, institutionalized uh, education. So uh, it uh, happened, uh, and uh, education uh, adults uh, were uh, provided some different kinds of ways to learn to improve their knowledge outside of the classroom. So we we can say that learner autonomy, the concept of learner autonomy, was first uh, primarily suggested. Uh, for out of class uh, learning. Okay, so within time, it's, it's changed and uh, it came to yes to us uh, in educate in institutionalized uh, way of learning, teaching or. Okay, so uh, in response to these kind of movements, first. Uh, the term was uh, uttered by uh, uh, uttered by the uh, researchers in a project, uh, yes, proposed in uh, Europe. So it is considered as a Western concept. And the aim, as I said, you, the aim of that uh, project was to avail, was to provide some opportunities uh, for life lear lifelong learning. Okay, so this is the story behind, but. Again, um, I can say that um, learn the autonomy is not a single or simple concept. So you have a lot to uh, hear about that. And 
uh, and naturally we have a, um, a strong background uh, stories. Okay, so uh, when you have a look at the theories, uh, I don't want to talk about all the theories here, but I just want you to uh, understand that this kind of concept is uh, it's not a simple uh, thing. So when uh, I read the papers uh, years ago, I uh, read something and it was uh, yes interesting uh, for me. So it says that uh, talking about learner autonomy is, so, is op like opening a can of worms. So you have a lot to talk, okay? So uh, establishing um, uh, uh, theoretical uh, background or uh, trying to connect all these things uh, about autonomy and theories. So you have many things to say and you have many theories to connect with. For instance, uh, as I said, you it's all about, uh, in fact, actually it comes from personality psychology. So it's all about, uh, so the here Kelly's uh, George Kelly's personal construct theory may help you. Or if you want to focus on its uh, relationship between competence or, uh, or motivation, you should go to those pages on self-determination theory. Or if you want to uh, change your teaching, your pedagogy, you should go to, uh, yes, uh, some pages like uh, yes, uh, providing you some information about humanism, humanism or humanistic approach. So here, as you see, uh, there's a strong um, just established background about behind the autonomy. So what learner autonomy is? So within time, we have different uh, conceptualizations. So at the very beginning, uh, the first prime uh, premier uh, leading figure of this issue stated that it is the ability to take charge of one's own learning. And you see another uh, researcher defined it as the situation in which the learner is totally responsible for all decisions concerned with his learning and the implement implementation of those decisions. So uh, the ability is acceptance of his or her own responsibility. And then we have again the ability, but this time we are focusing on something different and stated by Benson that it is to use uh, a variety of metacognitive strategies. So here you see it is coming from something, the ability to take uh, responsibility of your own learning, but um, in recent years, okay, we are focusing something different, metacognitive strategies. So it means that we should teach our students, teach uh, our learners how to learn but in a better way. So you should uh, provide some opportunities for your students to uh, help them find some better ways to learn uh, the uh, target content or target language. So here, another um, thing is also important. You should, um, while uh, trying to understand learner autonomy, you should also uh, uh, conceptualize that uh, by depending on not learner autonomies. For instance, because uh, when you have a look at the literature, you have a considerable number of studies and papers and books and yeah, many things. And so it's important to create a distinction, what is and what is not. So little here, as you see on the screen, says that it is not, for instance, it's not a synonym for self-instruction. So it means it's not it is not limited to learning without a teacher. So we have a teacher in the class. So you should, uh, so uh, it is also not a matter of letting the learners get, uh, it doesn't mean that as a teacher, you are letting learners and they can do everything they want, no. And it is not a teaching method. So it is a concept but you should consider this concept and you, you can find different ways so as to realize that, so as to actualize that, uh, so as to make it a part of your 
teaching. Okay, and also another important uh, dimension is that learner autonomy, autonomy is not an obsolete concept. So it's a matter of degree. So we can say that full autonomous or semi-autonomous. So we have such kind of uh, concepts as well. When you uh, review the literature, you will see see that. And another uh, important uh, point here is, as well, learner autonomy is not an unbridled learning style. It means a teacher support is necessary or teacher supportive behaviors are necessary for your learners to become autonomous learners. So what kind of characteristics autonomous learners have? So, uh, in recent here, so uh, in 2000, uh, yes, Oxford, uh, which, yes, who is the uh, most important figure in the field of uh, strategy research, uh, says that, or says that having characteristics, uh, autonomous learners have some characteristics like high motivation level, uh, and their motivation is a combination of extrinsic and interesting, yes one and they they have self-efficacy they have a sense of agency that means they have a, a sense of control and they are also uh, uh, uh, want you to seek a meaning behind learning procedures learning process and also they help have some positive attitudes towards a learning process, they uh, have always a need for achievement. Okay, in this respect, we can say that autonomous learners use some learning strategies such as self-evaluation, organization, goal setting, and uh, planning, information seeking, record keeping, self-monitoring, environmental structuring, giving oneself consequences of poor performance, that means you have always an account for a failure or achievement. So you have, uh, yes, autonomous learners use uh, strategies like rehearsing, memorizing, or seeking social assistance and reviewing. And let's see what else uh, it is stated about the characteristics of autonomous learners. Uh, another important figure in this kind, in this field of uh, research, autonomy research, little states that an autonomous learner regularly, regularly, okay, continuously, or uh, reflects on what they are learning and why they are learning, and how they are learning, with degree or success. Or success. So uh, they are always. Uh, thinking about and analyzing and uh, evaluating their learning process in different respects. And another figure is again, Benson here is another important figure in this field. Autonomous learner can direct the course of his own learning by making all the significant de decisions concerning its management and organization. So that's why they are good at, they should be, okay? So as to be a, an autonomous learner, they should be good at using uh, metacognitive strategies. So uh, they should be aware of yourself, how to learn, uh, learn how to learn or how to organize your learning, how to plan your learning. So you see here, depending on the characteristics of autonomous learner, we can say that we as teachers, as practitioners, we should always explore new learning situations for uh, uh, assisting our students, our learners, to become autonomous. And we should review our pedagogical practices. And at the end, we can say that um, so as to have some autonomous learners everywhere, we should also revision EFL teacher education because so as to have some autonomous learners, we need to have, we need to have some autonomous teachers as well. And here, so as to have a pedagogy for uh, autonomous uh, teach, autonomous learners, okay? So as to have a pedagogy for autonomy, uh, there are some areas of practice and uh, I will try to explain uh, different things under these approaches. So curriculum-based approaches, teacher-based approaches, technology-based approaches, 
uh, classroom-based approaches, learner-based approaches, and resource-based approaches. So these approaches will help you to find your own way so as to make your students autonomous. For instance, uh, curriculum-based approaches, um, it might be an utopian idea, but uh, you may have a control over your curriculum decisions. So let's uh, take this and let's uh, uh, narrow down this to your uh, class so you can have a control over your syllabus. So that's why uh, you can uh, share your uh, control uh, over syllabus with your students. So uh, when you have a look at teacher-based approaches, so teacher roles uh, are important here so as to help your learners to become autonomous. So we will talk about what kind of roles you should have in teacher education, as I said, you we should not be maybe uh, uh, as now researchers uh, by conducting some research in the field, we can uh, revision or we can uh, provide some information for the authorities to have some kind of changes in teacher education as well. Or technology-based approaches. Uh, now we have, yes, uh, and a billion of uh, t billion uh, of uh, ways to use technology uh, in the class. So uh, you should help your learners first to use uh, learning technologies independently as well. So you you can do this by doing technology a part of your teaching context, and you should encourage your learners to use it. And when you have a look at the classroom-based approaches, as uh, practitioners and uh, teachers, you should, yes, you have a control over your classroom decisions, but you should also share this um, with your students. So how you can do this, we will talk about that as well. And learner-based approaches, it's about uh, helping our lear your learners to become autonomous. So what kind of strategies uh, you can follow uh, also, I will talk about that and resource based approaches. So here, um, so the students have uh, many opportunities to use different resources. So they are nowadays, okay, when you compare this, uh, the years um, in which the autonomy was originated, yes, yes uh, the resources to find a resource was challenging, but this time, uh, yes, in this era, it is so uh, easy. It's so, yes, uh, so many uh, resources are available. So it's right, but in uh, this step, uh, we should also help our learners to use those available resources around. For instance, uh, yes, we have what kind of resources? Uh, uh, for instance, uh, concordances or some papers or some, yes, journals. But uh, learners need to know how to use those kind of uh, sources in their uh, learning process. Uh, let's say even a dictionary, okay? So uh, uh, students, the learners are uh, in need of learning how to use a dictionary as well, or how to use a concordance, how to use a, uh, another kind of dictionary like synonyms or something. So, they need to know how to use those resources in, independently. Okay, so let's see uh, uh, how, uh, yes, teacher-based approaches work. And uh, in the next slide, I want to talk about the teacher's role. So here, uh, at first, developing an awareness of uh, teacher's role, okay, is important because the development of learner autonomy depends on teachers developing uh, awareness of their role in the process. So now, maybe right now, as uh, practitioners, uh, you are taking the, uh, this step here. So I hope this kind of presentation will help you to raise an awareness on this issue. So in a climate of learner autonomy, both Learner and the teacher need space for flexibility in risk-taking, adjustment, experimentation, and decision-making. So as a teacher, you should be aware of this. So you should uh, 
leave a space for your learners to be flexible. You should leave a room for your learners to take some risk. And as a teacher, you should take some risks. For instance, so as to have some control over your, uh, your so as to share this role with your students, your, your uh, learners. So adjustments. So depending on the necessity needs of your learners, you should uh, do some adjustments to your uh, teaching pedagogies, uh, teaching procedures, and uh, learner autonomy. You should be yes. You should keep in your mind that learner autonomy can be developed with your own assistance as a teacher because you are the real uh, agency. You are the feel. Uh, you are the uh, real figure in the class that you can. Uh, give your learner uh, a chance to make a decision in their learning process to and uh, as a teacher in the uh, classroom uh, you can uh, manage this and the learners and teachers role in achieving learner autonomy uh, yes as I said you can't be uh, treated separately because uh, your role as a teacher uh, in helping your learners to become autonomous uh, should be dealt with uh, equally. And yes, at the end of the day, in brief, we can say that the promotion of learner autonomy depends on uh, promotion of teacher autonomy. Okay, what comes next? So what else you can, uh, what else you in what respects you should be uh, aware okay uh, you should uh, for uh, you if you want to take uh, learner autonomy as a goal in your classroom in your teaching context you should or you need to retrain or you need to have an enhanced awareness about the importance of your role in uh providing some reflective learning so the first keyword here is reflective uh, learning how you can provide uh, some different ways to help your learners to reflect on their learning process and uh, you should uh, take some risks so as to shift your role as teacher uh, with so you uh, you need to uh, leave a space or room for your learners to take your own role as well as a teacher. So at the end, uh, maybe it is something um, not easy for, your, for some of you, but the teacher may need to learn to let go. Uh, so you should uh, share the uh, roles, you should uh, share the authority to control everything in the class, but, but you should uh, need to learn at first to let go so as to become an autonomous teacher. And uh, as the uh, literature says, as practitioners, we cannot teach our students. Uh, we cannot uh, make them become autonomous, but we can create some atmosphere, some conditions in which they can feel encouraged to develop the autonomy. So creating some atmosphere necessary for their uh, autonomous learning is necessary here. So how does it happen? So you, as a teacher, you should provide some options, for instance. Some options while uh, organizing your uh, activities in your classes. Uh, you may ask your students to uh, cover some activity in group or, or in an individual uh, or in pair group. So, or you can provide some options in an exam as well. So you should, you can uh, provide some uh, more questions to ask to give your students to choose some of the questions uh, uh, for uh, among those questions. Okay, so uh you simply you can find some ways to provide some options for your learners in their learning processes and uh, so as to do this as i said you you should share your leadership you should share your teaching roles with your students as much as they as much as you can and they can as well so here a little um 
suggest some principles so as to provide some uh, autonomous learning opportunities for you and for students. In fact, uh, the first principle is about learning, uh, learner involvement. Learner involvement, as uh, and the other is about uh, learner reflect reflection, and the other is the principle of target language use. So, for the first principle, learner involvement, as a teacher, you should uh, involve your learners uh, fully in your planning, monitoring, and evaluating their own learning. And we will see how you can manage this in the following slides. And for learner uh, reflection, you must help your learners to reflect continuously on their process and content of uh, their learning. And you should engage them in their uh, assessment processes as well. So you, they should assess themselves uh, and regularly. And the next principle is about target language use. As a teacher, you should provide some opportunities for your learners to expose target language. So that means you should ensure that you use your target language as a medium and also as the goal of your learning, or their learning, because it is a target of, of your uh, students to learn that language, I mean. So how you can uh, make your students reflect on their learning. Um, so uh, at this point, we can say that the potential for learner autonomy increases as an individual's learning awareness grows. So as a teacher, you should nurture your students' awareness. You should raise their awareness in, in terms about their learning process. Therefore, some activities which prompt uh, learners to reflect on their learning uh, aim to enhance their insight into their learning processes. So uh, as you see on the screen, you have some questions. So for instance, during some tasks, during some, uh, some activities, you may uh, provide such kind of questions uh, to your students. Why are we doing this? What, how will this help? What makes it difficult? So as a teacher, you can exchange your ideas about uh, for instance, uh, let's say you are uh, teaching your learners how to use some can-do statements, okay? So uh, you should uh, uh, explain the rationale behind this, that topic, and you should uh, also exchange your ideas how they can make use of can-do statements. And maybe... Uh, some parts of learning process might be difficult for your learners. So at this point for you, so for instance, uh, you can uh, inform them, you can discuss their uh, challenges, their difficulties in their learning process. And another way to help your learners to reflect on their learning, uh, for instance, you can ask your learners to keep a journal diary or a journal entry. And so while doing this, you should uh, provide some uh, questions as prompts for your students. Uh, for instance, uh, when they go to their home, uh, they can take some notes in their journal, learn what, did, what topic you covered in the class. But here, the next question is also important. What are you going to do differently as a, to, as a result of today's learning? So here, with these kind of questions, your learners will gain an insight in their learning process. And on the part of teachers, teachers also, so as to become a teacher, autonomous teacher, they also need to have some practices, uh, reflective practices. And them here uh, states or suggest such kind of uh, list, such kind of checklist for teachers to reflect on their uh, practices, teaching practices. Let's see what kind of questions is, uh, are available in this checklist. For instance, um, the first question, how I made the official demands or aims clear to the students or learners? They, their parents and do learners know what is expected of them or how I made my demands ex or expectations clear how I have I given have I given my learners a genuine choice 
what to do, what kind of activities, what kind of topic, what kind of content of activities in terms of this, or in terms of who to work with, for instance, in a group work, okay? So you, you, uh, there's no need to assign everything in the class. So you may leave a space for your learners to choose who to work with, or uh, you should give some choices to your students how to do it. Uh, how, for instance, how to perform a work, uh, how to take a turn in class, in front of the class, or uh, sitting in, in uh, their seats, or uh, uh, they can take different ways to present their work. So you should check if you uh, give your learners some choices, or uh, you can ask yourself, have I prepared my learners to make uh, some other choices? Have I made sure that my learners are familiar with different activity types, different ways of, ways of organizing their work, different tools for keeping track of their uh, work? So in at this step, you may provide some uh, strategies so as to help your learners. Have I introduced uh, useful tools for raising the learners' awareness of their own learning? Uh, so there are some other some ways to do this. You may use some logbooks like uh, journal entries or diaries or portfolios or posters or something. So you see this kind of checklist uh, you can use so as to be reflective in your teaching practices. So, and under the uh, title of technology approach, technology-based approaches, uh, we can talk about uh, technology and its potential for your for learner autonomy. Um, technology uh, easily uh, can uh, direct learners' attention to metacognitive strategies. So what are these strategies about? These uh, strategies are about planning, uh, self-monitoring, self-evaluation, or uh, some uh, strategies which are required for effective exploitation of the facility or the technology or the tool they, uh, the students learning, uh, using. So at the very beginning, okay, before discussing the, all these things about technology and its potential, uh, we should be aware that as teachers, uh, you should be open to innovational technologies. You should be open to try something new. And uh, as teacher, you should encourage your students, your learners to use those technologies. Uh, so their active involvement and uh, their participation is important. So you should uh, give an emphasis on active involvement and learner centeredness. So here, uh, you can help your learners to go from a dependency, interdependency, and independency. So that means you can help your learners to make use of technology on their own independ in independently, uh, so as to uh, proceed in their own learning process. So here, uh, uh, another point here, uh, they also need to have some uh, kind of support, or you as a teacher, you may need uh, a support in terms of learning some uh, digital literacies or in terms of getting some uh, new competences for, for instance, designing on an online content for your students. Okay, so uh, you should improve yourself best way because this is the era of technology, so uh, you should do something more so as to keep up with the um, uh, updated ways of integration of technology. Okay, technology and its potential for learner autonomy. We uh, discussed that. I tried to inform you that you should always uh, share the uh, share your role uh, with your students in terms of controlling over. Uh, their learning process. So technology help you to share uh, your role, your autonomy with your students, because as you see in the slide, different types of technologies will help your learners to control over uh, entry, over learning content. For instance, uh, let's see, uh, suppose that you are using some uh, kind of uh, 
CMC or computer mediated uh, communication programs or uh, platforms like uh, forums or you can use some you know, web authoring tools or online discussion forums or uh, virtual learn learning environments, social media tools, because in those platforms, uh, you will uh, provide some opportunities for your learners to control over entry. And so they have a uh, chance to um, produce anything on these uh, kind of platforms. So uh, let's suppose that you uh, ask your learners to create some blocks so they have some control over text creation there and uh, they can create, they can, uh, they have chance, limitless opportunities to uh, have control over their own learning process again. So here at this step, um, it's very challenging to uh, tell everything about uh, how to integrate technology, but uh, maybe I can uh, provide some different uh, web two tools for you to use your uh, classrooms for instance uh, you may make use of ebook sites so uh, you may ask your students to create some uh, their own ebook so as to for instance so as to uh, tell about the topic that you are teaching in the class so or uh, they, you have some other opportunities to use some story making sites like Storybird, Story Creator, or you make use of some animation uh, programs, some tools. So you, all, as a teacher, you can integrate them. Uh, you, you can uh, provide some learning content by using such kind of tools. And also you can ask your students to provide, uh, to prepare their own uh, content by using these tools as well. So uh, collaborative for uh, collaboration, for instance, you can use some, uh, for instance, for writing class, okay. So you can use Google documents. So it is a great opportunity for you to give feedback. So you can ex exchange your ideas and you can also uh, work on the same uh, document at the same time with your students. So it is a great chance for you to do this. And uh, for instance, Mentimeter, I uh, personally used this at this seminar, uh, at the very beginning of this seminar. So we uh, tried to uh, create a word cloud so easily. So you can also integrate such kind of collaborative, uh, such kind of tools so as to work collaboratively with your students. And as, and another, um, yes, slide, uh, another, uh, tool page for you, for instance, for um, integrating uh, virtual learning environments, you may use uh, Edmodos or uh, Class Dojo or Cl Google Class uh, or other pages and Google Classroom. So from the very beginning of my teaching, I'm, I've been using this Google Class and yes, uh, I find it very useful. And uh, for, for instance, for conferencing or remote learning, you can uh, use some uh, web two tools as you see on the screen uh, in the second column. And uh, flip learning is another way to make your students uh, become autonomous because uh, yes, uh, as uh, learners, they are taking the responsibility of learning the content uh, on their own. So these are the tools that you can use uh, so as to manage that. And you may use some kind of augmented uh, reality it's because uh, for instance, Second Life or the other spacecraft, the other tools. So uh, you will have, or you have as pre-vision different learners uh, characteristics. So you may have find some different ways to help them to become autonomous. So uh, uh, these kind of uh, tools will help you to control over learning content to uh, make them uh, feel responsible for their own learning. Or you can integrate 
game gamings or different games or gamification tools as well. So uh, they will be part of the process. So uh, so many tools are available to us to make your students uh, part of your uh, teaching uh, context. And another way about, yes, under the title of learner-based approaches, I mean, the so the previous slide about uh, the related areas of practice. So what uh, you can do uh, else so as to help your learners to, to become autonomous, um, learner training or uh, strategy training, or in other words, we can use uh, strategy-based instruction as well. So these ways also are helping. So uh, there's a slight difference between learner training and strategy training. So uh, let me uh, clarify that distinction between. Uh, learner training is mostly uh, focusing on developing study skills in general uh, for independent learning. But when it comes to strategy training, we are uh, in strategy training, we are helping our learners to uh, learn and use uh, some different strategies, some uh, language learning strategies uh, consciously. So in strategy training, for instance, uh, you can use that inventory by Oxford, who is the uh, leading figure in this field, strategy uh, research, I mean. Uh, you can use that kind of inventory so as to see your students' uh, use of frequency uh, of their uh, strategies, okay? And then after uh, determining their uh, level of uh, their frequency of using some strategies, you can uh, raise an awareness about the other ways of uh, using some other strategies, I mean. So here, the source learner strategies, a guide for teachers is for you again. Uh, you may uh, use that source so as to proceed uh, in how to help your learners in a strategy training program. And here for learning learner training, uh, Nanan uh, presents uh, a nine-step program for uh, practitioners, for teachers. Let's see uh, what kind of uh, steps you should cover so as to uh, make use of learner training. So learner training, for learner training and for uh, helping your students to become autonomous, at, at the first side, okay, at the first step, you should make your instruction goals clear to your learners. So you, you should make your learners aware about the topic and the goal. And you should allow your learners to create their own goals. So based on their needs, their own needs, they will have some uh, goals as well. And as a teacher, you should encourage your learners to use uh, their uh, target language outside the class. Please uh, do not uh, try to think about this uh, physical uh, environment outside the class. So with the help of technology, you ha have, uh, yes, many opportunities to encourage your learners to use their target language, for instance, online, okay? So, um, so you, you may find many ways to do this. Um, I'm saying this because I know that uh, some of the teachers are, uh, yes, uh, are insisting that they ha their students have no chance to use their target language outside the class because this is a kind a country in which the, the target language is used as a foreign language, so you have limited chance. But in this era, uh, it is, uh, yes, uh, it's not uh, working to. Uh, yes some kind of excuses for this because uh, technology helps us very well. Okay, uh, the other step is to raise awareness of learning processes. So uh, I try to help you to, uh, I try to inform you about this in my previous slides. I mean, how to raise your students' awareness of their learning processes, some kind of reflective practices might be helpful. You, as a teacher, should help learners identify their own preferred styles and strategies. So you can, again, uh, use that kind of inventory so as to be, uh, so as to make your students 
aware of their own preferred style. Some inventories are uh, very uh, readily used, so they are available in the literature if you uh, search for some uh, yes, some research papers, articles. Uh, you will have some inventories, some scales, so as to measure your students' preferred styles and strategies. And uh, another step here, again, it is something familiar to you because we discussed this. You should always encourage your learners' choice. choice. So you should provide some options to your students in every part of your teaching uh, process. And you should allow your learners to generate their own tasks. So uh, for instance, at this step, you may provide some examples, but uh, with the help of technology, you may ask your students to uh, produce their own tasks. So you may make use of uh, project-based learning here as well. You, you should encourage your learners to become teachers. Maybe, uh, so the next one is uh, to become researchers this time. So here uh, as teacher with your students. So. Uh, in one class, you may ask your students to um, tell about the uh, thing about how to use can do statements or give some examples. So uh, even young learners uh, yes, uh, enjoy being a teacher uh, in a class. So you can give your students to become teachers in your class as well. Uh, it might be suit. It might be su suitable for all levels, I guess. But but yes, just uh, take a step, okay. And uh, you may encourage. You should encourage your learners to become t researchers. So that means uh, you should encourage your your learners to find out some kind of knowledge on their own. Uh, so with the help of technology, again, it is easier in this kind of era of technology. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, steps that you can follow so as to help your learners to become autonomously by making use of learner training. And when it comes to the explicit strategy training, I can give you an, another example, strategy training. Uh, for instance, in 2013, okay, um, I conducted it in strategy training uh, program for my students who uh, felt anxious in their speaking. Uh, so they were my prep year students. Uh, so here I made use of, so there are many different typologies or taxonomies about communication strategies, but I use that one. And here in explicit strategy training uh, program, the idea is that providing some tasks uh, to uh, make your students to use these strategies available on that taxonomy consciously. Maybe some of the strategies were uh, already used by students, but some others might be helpful for them to uh, uh, go on or for them to hear uh, in strategy training at the very beginning again you should raise an awareness for uh, in terms of strategy so you can have a discussion on the issue I mean the strategies and different uh, communication strategy taxonomies or typologies uh, you can uh, provide such kind of uh, background information at first uh, on different uh, taxonomies. And then uh, you can, again, use a kind of inventory or a tool size to see your students' uh, strategy use. And uh, you should uh, present some uh, tasks for your students to perform their speaking skills so as to use these strategies. So you should have a focus uh, which one uh, or which strategies should be used for, uh, for instance, for task one. Okay, so you, uh, in a way, just try to um, ask your students to use these strategies available in the list of, uh, so it is uh, something like this. So uh, at the end, again, you can uh, compare their progress, uh, they, their uh, use of uh, strategies. So 
uh, like this, you may help your students uh, to use different strategies. So these are about so these are about communication strategies, but we have uh, different strategies as well. So this so the focus here is was on the uh, communication. So that's why uh, it was focusing on uh, some communication strategies, but there are more different uh, strategies that you can use depending on students' uh, needs. Here, another way to help your students again uh, is called as language advising. Sometimes researchers, uh, the, the figures in the field call it like counseling, language counseling. Or sometimes, uh, yes, you may have maybe heard about learner contracts. So here in language advising, uh, the idea is that uh, as teacher or as mentor, uh, you are coming uh, together with your learner and you have some meetings and some discussions so as to uh, help your learners in terms of uh, uncover their needs, their progress, uh, or uh, you can provide some materials and uh, you can help the learners so as to plan their own learning process. So this is the, another way to help. So these are the um, different ways to help your students to promote their autonomy. So uh, I can say that this uh, era, uh, so when you have a look at the uh, methodology uh, research, you can say that this is called as a post-method pedagogy. So you can follow if you are in favor of this kind of pedagogy, it means as a teacher, you may uh, make use of the uh, methodologies or your prior knowledge about methodologies. And uh, you should, uh, pardon me. Post-method pedagogy uh, recognizes the teacher's uh, potential to know uh, not only how to teach the content, but also know how to act com uh, autonomously within academic and administrative constraints imposed by institutions, curricula, and textbooks. So such an ability can evolve only if teachers have a desire and determination to acquire and assert a fair degree of autonomy in pedagogic decision making. So that means as a teacher, if you want to raise if you want to uh, help your learners to become autonomous learners, uh, at first uh, at first step as a teacher, you should have a desire to do this. So I can say that po uh, post methods pedagogy also uh, ask you to become an autonomous teacher, and at the end of the day, you may have autonomous learners as well. So I know that there are some challenges. Uh, because uh, we have some education policy, we have some school authorities, and uh, we are aware that so as to promote learner autonomy, uh, the entire system should support you. So uh, as a teacher, as a practitioner teacher, maybe you, uh, by providing, uh, by changing some in-class uh, procedures, you may change something. You, you, you may take a new step to uh, change the uh, system. So, uh, uh, but as, as I said, you, you should have a desire to do it at the very beginning. And uh, another challenge, yes, the entire system. And another challenge is about uh, sociocultural challenge that you can experience while you are trying to make your students autonomous. Because as I, uh, at the very beginning of this presentation, as I said you, this is a concept uh, which is regarded as a Western concept because uh, it uh, was firstly devised for the adults uh, who uh, are living in Europe and most in North America, so North, uh, and concept was 
suggested for those who uh, are living in that society, in that cultural uh, context. So that means their way of thinking, their way of uh, looking uh, around or their perspective towards life might be different. But that does not mean that um, learner autonomy may not be a universal good. So it is stated in the, uh, in the literature that learner autonomy may not be a universal good. But uh, as a teacher, as a practitioner teacher in different uh, contexts, okay, uh, you may have different ways to suit this kind of concept to your teaching context. Because if, okay, if the goal of autonomy and um, for, uh, learn, autonomous learning, okay, is your own goal, uh, you should be aware that autonomy in learning and life uh, is a universal aspiration. So everyone wants to have an autonomy in their own life. So why don't you, as a teacher, uh, why don't you have autonomy in your teaching as well? Why don't you help your learners to have autonomy in their uh, learning process as well? So. Uh, in the literature, in the literature, it's stated that it is socially bound capacity because uh, every learner in different contexts uh, may have different capacities so as to um, uh, operate, uh, so as to uh, have a degree of autonomy, but it's okay. So as a teacher, you should take some precautions and you should consider all variables associated with your own uh, social, cultural, or educational context. So uh, it is important to be uh, aware, uh, to be aware about this issue at the very beginning. And uh, it is uh, probable that different cultural, educational environments uh, may have different influences on your uh, practices so as to help your students autonomous, but it's okay. The realization and the practice of uh, being an autonomous learner, yes, it is uh, varying from time to time, from context to te text and from culture to culture. So as a teacher, you can uh, globalize this uh, concept, but uh, at first uh, step as a teacher, you should localizing autonomy. So that means, uh, there might be some uh, utopic, utopic ideas that you cannot realize, that you cannot use in your own context, but you may find the uh, suitable, uh, you may take suitable uh, And please remember what we have sure that some of the ways might be uh, yes practical might be uh, yes uh, possible to use in your context as well so here since it was yes considered as some kind of western concept i uh, again um, conducted a comprehensive uh, literature review so as to help you to find a new ways, uh, new ways to uh, make your students autonomous. So I uh, uh, reviewed some articles again. So you see the data publication is so present, 2002 or 20 or 90. So here, as you see, uh, uh, teachers in Indonesia are making use of the way language advising or in Vietnam, some teachers uh, are making use of self-assessment or reflective uh, activities, or uh, some others are making use of some cooperative learning so as to help your students, help their students become autonomous. And in Turkey, a recent publication about this uh, is making use of uh, strategy training. Uh, and again, the others are about uh, collaborative learning and technology uh, integration. So as you see, uh, yes, there are many ways to uh, to uh, manage this autonomous learning. And what I'm personally doing in my classes, 
I also, as I uh, as my professor uh, Kayolo informed you at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, my uh, MA thesis was focusing on this issue, and uh, before that, uh, this topic was uh, interesting for me. So that's why I'm and uh, I'm yes uh, still interested in that topic. And I, as a teacher, as a practitioner, in those times I were just yes uh, MA student and I were conducting some uh, research but at this time I have chance to practice I have chance to use what I have in my mind so uh, as a teacher as a practitioner I have some ways to uh, make our my students uh, to move along a continuum from total dependence on me as a teacher to full autonomy so uh, what am I doing uh, I uh, just want to uh, take my students' opinions so as to integrate their ideas into my syllabus at the very beginning of the term. Uh, for instance, I'm, I doing, I'm doing this for my MA classes. Let me show the so way I am. I'm using some Google uh, documents and uh, for instance, uh, here uh, on the right side, yes. For instance, an academic writing, okay? This is my BA class. And uh, at the very beginning of the term, I uh, prepared this form and I, uh, I asked my students to fill up this form. What is, what is the most difficult side of writing in English? What, dif what difficulties you face most when you write English? What is the best side of writing in English? What part of writing process do you enjoy most? And also, I uh, ask you their expectations and suggestions about the class. So what else I'm doing? I also encourage my learners to uh, assess themselves, to, uh, yes, how I'm doing this. Let me again uh, show you an example. For instance, this, uh, yes, this form on the, Yes, to me, it is on the left. Okay, self-evaluation, as you see. Uh, the first question, please evaluate your performance and state your grade. So this is in-class performance. So I ask you to do this. Uh, I ask uh, my MA students to do this. So throughout the uh, semester, they had some tasks. They have some discussions in the class. So they have some criteria to uh, evaluate, the, evaluate their performance. So I kindly ask them to uh, give themselves to a, yes, a grade. And then I uh, ask them uh, to give some reasons why uh, they are thinking that they deserve that grade. And also, I make use of some peer evaluation uh, Yes, and I ask them to state the most active student's name in the class. And again, they are uh, supposed to give some grades to uh, their uh, peers, their uh, friends. And at the end, I, I also ask them to share their uh, feelings and their suggestions for, for the future uh, classes, for the future students. So uh, I make use of them. And also, uh, I'm also using some other way to uh, help my students to reflect on the learning process. How, uh, for instance, I'm adding a bonus question in the exam and I uh, simply ask them to create a question, their own question and their own answer to that question. So adding a question, I mean, formulating a question by a student is also uh, challenging uh, and also a part of learning process because by looking at that question you may understand that these uh, students have an idea about a topic or uh, totally unaware of that topic so uh, it is also giving you an idea about uh, their learning and also they can uh, in this way they can reflect on their previous learning what they had about that topic Okay, so uh, in a way, they are uh, critically analyzing their learning by uh, preparing a question and answer to that question. And also, in this way, I'm uh, trying to share my role as a teacher 
uh, with my students. And also, for instance, in my um, academic writing, uh, I also ask my students to use a checklist. I provide that checklist and I ask them to edit their work and their peers' work as well. So self-editing and peer editing also and other ways to make uh, them, they, uh, your learners, to become autonomous as we discussed, as I informed you here. And also, I uh, get some uh, opinions at the end and also throughout the semester. I ask my students to uh, prepare their uh, own self-reports on different aspects of the courses they had. For instance, um, uh, for instance, here, in the, yes, the first form, uh, if any, okay, what are the weakest side of this class? If any, what are the strongest uh, side of this class? And what do you suggest for improving this course uh, in terms of class content, in terms of materials? Or at the end, as you see, I want uh, my students to uh, rate the quality of the class. So that was research class. I that. I use that form. And um, again, uh, I, uh, yes, self reports. Yes, here, as you see on the right side, I also use that one. I have completed the assignments on time. So I, I, I'm kindly, I was kindly asking my students to fill up this form so as to reflect on their uh, learning process, their participation, their performance again. So. I have completed the assignments on time. I have tried to contribute to discussions in the class. I have tried my best while preparing the assignments. I've tried to attend class regularly. So here, uh, by, gain, by taking their opinions, I also uh, see how uh, they are uh, honest to themselves uh, and to me as well, because uh, this kind of um, yes uh, way of getting their ideas uh, is helping them to uh, reflect on their uh, performance and also is also helping for me to uh, see how they um, how they perceive this kind of uh, learning process. It is also important. And um, what else I'm doing? I'm trying to instruct uh, my. I'm trying to uh, encourage my students to interact. Uh, and I uh, personally, okay, remind my students uh, frequently that I'm giving value to their contributions to, to their ideas. Okay, I, I'm trying to um, create an environment so as to help them feel relaxed and help them feel that the, their contribution is valued, valued by me, giving importance by me. And uh, again, uh, yes, I'm encouraging them to act like a researcher in different classes by giving some other tasks. And yes, uh, I think that's all for my part today, but here as a last excerpt from the literature. So I, uh, yes, I give significance to uh, the theories, to, to the research conducted in the field. So the other, I'm giving importance to other voices. So uh, I want to end this seminar with this excerpt, okay. Uh, while autonomous language learning seems a most, yes, logical and desirable aim, which most ELT educa educationalists would endorse, or it remains in many cases as unfulfilled and, and uh, un unattainable dream. This may be because autonomous language learning does not appear to be achievable by practicing any one uh, teaching methodology, nor does autonomous language learning seem to be facilitated by any one principle or practice, but on the contrary, uh, seems to involve taking into account a whole range of issues. So uh, as a practitioners, as a teachers here, uh, you should um, take all the considerations into, yes, all the considerations into account because as I said at the very beginning of this seminar, 
uh, learner autonomy is not single and simple uh, construct, but it covers a lot of issues. So uh, as a teacher, you should be aware of that and you should take uh, right steps so as to help your students to proceed in this continuum from uh, dependency to interdependency with your collaboration and then uh, maybe independency. So at the end of the day, maybe uh, you may help your learners to take an independent step in their learning process. So here at the end of my seminar, again, I need to have your opinions. I need to have your uh, reflections. And this is the, again, quote uh, that you can use so as to share your ideas with me. Thank you very much. And I hope um, you enjoyed the seminar and the content that I want to, uh, that I tried to share with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rashid, thank you very much. Uh, I know, uh, but anyway, it's a very, very beautiful and very inspiring uh, presentation. And I know you have a lot of stuff to share with us. And uh, so it's not easy to discuss uh, the issue which I believe has a lot of sub, let's say, uh, issues, sub concepts uh, for each of, of which we need to have another session. Uh, and you very uh, successful outline the background of the issue. And also you summarize and, and uh, what is uh, uh, autonomous learning, what is, uh, who is autonomous learner, what is not, and also you, uh, Again, in a very nice manner, you suggested some practical, uh, let's say, advice, some uh, practical suggestions which most of we can use in our classroom. Because at the at the very beginning, I posed a question. I said, "We are we know the term autonomous, and everyone know knows the term uh, autonomous, but we do not know how to go about this issue. We do not know how to make our learners autonomous. Although we articulate, we repeat, and this word in various contexts, but when it comes to practice, so we feel on, and uh, uh, there's, there's not much we can do about this, but you very nicely suggested and some and practical ideas. Also, you kindly share your uh, experiences that you had uh, from your own instruction. At the same time, you also warn us of the, of the challenges uh, that we, we may face. And, uh, but when I was listening to you, just something came to my mind. Uh, maybe we should have discussed and uh, who are autonomous teacher or whether we are autonomous teacher. I mean, so before we discussed the issue of autonomous learner and whether uh, we are autonomous teachers, whether we can or we are able to liberate ourselves from the deep seated, let's say old practices, deep seated old, let's say uh, beliefs and fashion, the things that we have been doing for years and years. So because I understand that, uh, Though the students take responsibility for their learning, but it is a teacher who helps them to help themselves. So teacher's role remains uh, very, let's say, uh, critical. And this is what I, what I understand from your uh, explanation. But again, it, it's a question that we need to discuss and also question how much we are are we autonomous? Whether we are the right people, whether we whether we are we are the people to promote learning autonomy. What else can be done to make to increase the awareness of teachers about this issue? Because you know, there's a well-known saying: if you give a man a fish, he or she uh, uh, goes for one day. But if you fish him or her, and you feed him for a, long, a lifetime. But again, we have some very fundamental issues, some cultural issue. I'll tell you from our experience, uh, let me see if she's Turkish here. Öğrencilere soru soruyoruz. Diyoruz ki arkadaşlar, bir soru sorun Raşid'e. Ve kendiniz cevaplayın. Birçok öğrenci geliyor. Hocam, siz sorar mısınız? 
Ya öğrenci diyorsun ki arkadaşlar bir soru sor. Ask any question you like, any answer. Ee, bazı 30 puanlık, bazı 50 puanlık soru. Öğrenci diyor ki hocam size sorar mısınız? Yani çok hani some most this issue ask a question very challenging and very tough issue. Belki bu biraz da kültürle alakalı bir şey. Yani dolayısıyla as you suggested this is, this is a, a social cultural issue which, which is embedded uh, in our previous education. Dolayısıyla it takes some time for all of us to overcome a, a, a this problem. Uh, söyledikten sonra uh, uh, so I open the floor <gülüyor> yeah. Bey, I, I closed up the chat box when I'm <gülüyor> when I was presenting so I didn't see your notifications or something so I have the control over the process <gülüyor> totally so I didn't share it with you <gülüyor> but uh, sorry for that because Uh, yes, uh, as I said you previously, I have some notifications, some uh, yes, some announcements on the screen. So that was sometimes um, uh, distracting for me. So that's why I try to uh, yes close it at the very beginning of the seminar. I'm sorry, but yes. right now I saw that yeah I missed yes I missed. It's okay, Rush. I am I am I am. Well, I'm sincere. I, I have to say that I find your, your presentation very, very helpful. At least I myself, I know what else I can do to make, to promote learn autonomy. Uh, so again, I mean, your presentation, I mean, is, was, has been full of very nice, very really beautiful uh, practical ideas, which are of great help to us when we go back to class. And I'm sure In, in the first place, I'll go back and use and try the things that you share with us. Thank you very Thank much. Evet arkadaşlar, so uh, please, uh, the, the platform is yours. And soru, uh, cevap, question. So the support team, uh, I think we are receiving some uh, sorts of, you know, feedback uh, from the audience. Uh, So you can share those uh, those feedback and comments either from YouTube and as well. Uh, but there's uh, Turga Hocam. I... Turga Hocam burada mı? Yes, Hocam. Uh, Turga Hocam burada mı? YouTube'da mı? Nerede? Turga Hocam. Uh, hocam buradayım. <gülüyor> Zoom'dayım. Uh, Zoom. Ya Turga Hocam. Uh, yani it was nasıl diyelim? It was very an great mi diyelim kind mi diyelim of you to be here uh, at this time çünkü uh, Turgay hocam şu anda efendim yeni bir haber aldık uh, bugün uh, bir bebeği bugün itibariyle uh, dünyaya geldi tüm audience adına uh, on behalf of audience and also our department hocama uh, tebrik ediyoruz uh, bir uh, sağlıklı bir uh, Oğlumuz, oğlan değil mi hocam? Yanlış mı? Doğru mu bilgi? Doğrudur, doğrudur hocam. hocam çok tebrik ediyorum. Bugünün evet. hayırlı olsun. Allah anam babalı büyüsün. Ee, bunu biz İngilizce'ye tercüme etsin aramızda. Ee, <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Hayır, bay değiller. Evet, i̇ki tane çok değerli doktorantımız var. İnşallah bir için doktorat yapıyorlar. <gülüyor> Mütercim, tercümanlık dalında. Evet, e, Allah analı babalı bir üstüne... God bless them diyebiliriz ben. Neyseniz <gülüyor> <gülüyor> tabii. Ben, tabii. Dolayısıyla tekrar Turgay Hocam çok mutlu oldum e, bu vesileyle de. Gözünüz aydın hocam, çok güzel Gözünüz bir haber. Çok, çok aydın. teşekkür ederim <gülüyor> hocam. Çok <gülüyor> sağ olun, eksik olmayın. Uh, I push myself to be here because I enjoyed all presentations uh, on this platform and also all the participants' contribution. I really enjoyed them. Uh, I try to find some uh, time to share with you. Uh, thank you very much again for announcing everybody that I have a baby, newborn baby. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Okay, we are also receiving a lot of congratulatory messages from a lot of people, including Selçuk Hocam and Jamal Hocam and other people Hocam. So um, you may follow the messages from your uh, chat box. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so again, Uh, feel free to ask any question, any contribution. So you're always welcome to share your own experience, uh, which comes from your own instruction uh, in your real uh, teaching. Uh... Hocam, we have comments on YouTube. 
And uh, they say hi and thanks to you, Rashid Hocam. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, all of them. Thank you. I hope uh, you may take one way to step further. So uh, I hope it's my, yes, they find my presentation helpful for their future practices. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please, Dida Hocam. Yes, thank you very much for your nice presentation. And I am also very interested in, I mean, autonomy, lean learners, autonomy and gaining it from the perspective of the learner. Mm -hmm. And it was very useful for us. Thank you. And you mentioned about the roles of a teacher to achieve learner autonomy. And you also said something like leading them, I mean, while doing so, but while uh, motivating learners to be like uh, more, let's say, free about their learning process. You mentioned about something like leading them into independency and dependency. I mean, I just uh, got stuck Inter in that interdependency. Thing. Actually, inter. Yeah. So at the what very beginning, yes, yes, dependence. I mean, do you mean leading the learner to another atmosphere in which she or he is controlled in a way? I mean, by whom, by what? Okay. I, I didn't understand that part. Okay, thank you for yes, thank you for a question. Maybe I should uh, yes make some clarifications because. Uh, since I was yes uh, interested in that top in this topic, uh, I have uh, many uh, information in at the background, so that's why I might not see some uh, something uh, which you find missing uh, like this. But here uh, at the very beginning, okay, uh, uh, in a traditional class, the student is dependent on the teacher, so the teacher is always instructing and giving some kind of information mm -hmm. and the teacher is a kind of receiver. So here the, t the, the student is dependent. So it is called as dependency, dependent on teacher. And mm -hmm. in the autonomous uh, way of learning, you uh, as a teacher, as a practitioners, we aim to make our students independent learners. But in the meantime, you also Okay, dependency and independency. This is independency because the students at the end will become independent learners so they can create a, their own learning uh, content, task and anything. And they can organize, plan their own learning process. But uh, within this process, uh, on this continuum, okay, we can say that uh, there is something in the middle, interdependency. So interdependency implies that you need always as a uh, learner, uh, you need to have a kind of collaboration with your uh, teacher, with your uh, other uh, learners around. So this is called as interdependency. So mm -hmm. this, is, yes, this is the thing that I want to say. So here, uh, the students uh, should uh, uh, proceed towards independency. I understand. Thank you very much. I thought it is something um, something out of the class. I mean, while student is alone studying or, for example, there are some platforms like Cambly. I sometimes mm -hmm. direct my students to such platforms because uh, they can practice and learn language independently. Yes. But I mean independent from the actual teacher but dependent to another one actually that that's why i thought maybe it could be counted as like this i don't know that's why i wanted to uh, make you clarify it okay thank you very much so yes uh, as i uh, try to um, stress at the very beginning of this uh, presentation i uh, wanted to uh, make you aware that uh, by uh, autonomous learning activities, uh, you sh you are in a way helping your students to become uh, independent learners, and you are doing mm -hmm. this uh, also in class. And you may help your learners to become independent, and you can they can uh, proceed at their own as an independent learner out of the class as well. So, yeah. and you will be uh, yes. 
Uh, Independent from the actual teacher makes them sometimes, even depending to another one, makes them feel more free about practicing because they are always with us mm -hmm. and they may not want to speak the same topics or, I mean, to the same person all the time. And so I direct them to, I mean, to such other platforms to see how they have achieved, I understand. And so mm -hmm. this is what I mean. So sometimes it is useful, <laughs> but I also wanted to uh, learn about your ideas about this. Okay, so with, uh, with the uh, help of other teachers, so the students may experience different kinds of teaching practices. They may be exposed to a kind of different language model. So this might be also helpful for your students to uh, gain a kind of, uh, yes, uh, autonomy in the sense that uh, they can uh, create their own way of understanding that teacher as well. So a new teacher may be helpful as well. But here, as I said, you independency is about independent way of organizing uh, own learning process. And Thank as you, a teacher, you can be also an independent, so autonomous teacher. So it means you, as a teacher, you can take on your own decisions so as to help your students to make them autonomous. Mm -hmm. And at, uh, on the other hand, uh, you uh, are proceeding, you are uh, improving yourself as a reflective teacher. So uh, again, uh, you are helping yourself to become an autonomous teacher at the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Dizak, thank you very much for the question, which I believe uh, gave a good chance and to uh, Rashid Ojam to clarify a very subtle point. But again, let me remind you one thing, since we all know for sure that in the there are individual differences, I mean, we, mm -hmm. we know that. So if, if we believe that there are individual differences, which means that, I mean, learners differ in the way they learn, Learners differ in the way they make things, uh, they make sense out of things. So, so somehow they need to get involved in making decision process. That, not necessarily, uh, it means that we put them in the ocean alone in their own without any help or support. No, we support them, we help them. But since they are different from each other in their, in their learning process, so somehow we need to address that issue. Uh, so teachers remain all the time on the stage, but helping, supporting, but not necessarily dictating all the time. So uh, thank you very much. We help them, but see. Uh, uh, just by the way, Turgay uh, Ujam. So I received a very professional translation uh, for the Turkish statement I made at the very beginning. I said, Allah uh, uh, Allah Allah So. Uh, I trust the translation and uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mohammed Ujam says, may Allah let him grow up in good health with his beloved ones. So this is a an, an, an, an yeah. professional um, translation. Yeah, I really like that translation. <laughs> for, uh, for these statements. I have to, I have thought a few minutes to <laughs> a good present uh, translation, but it is very good. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Sign by the Thank you very much for for your contribution. I I always rally and the professionals. Okay, uh, anyone else to ask any question to make any contribution? Uh... Uh, hi, teacher. Uh, maybe I can make some contributions. Maybe I can uh, direct some question. Yes, Talib, I would be very happy to listen to you, but could you be kind enough to make it a bit uh, short, please, because okay. we are running out of time. Uh, in my opinion, uh, as you and also all teacher mentioned, uh, it is like mostly maybe uh, dependent to the culture and uh, maybe uh, as uh, first members of the, the culture and the first teachers, uh, they are parents, where we got this, uh, I call it some kind of... Uh, illness maybe because uh, we so it is it is a kind of uh, so uh, what teacher here doing is uh, to heal heal this students who already became uh, dependent to like parent dependency or 
teacher dependency. So what uh, our teacher have as a suggestion, like uh, to have this prepared process earlier for maybe uh, like uh, for the first teachers who are the parents. So Talib, let me uh, state, let me ask the question. Uh, you mean uh, you need to have some ideas to uh, make this process early? I mean, uh, you need to hear something about how to become autonomous learner without. Uh, so this is yeah, the- yeah, this well, is I mean, yeah. For example, uh, we we got this seminar like in the in the age uh, of uh, university years. So until we arrived this uh, this mm -hmm. years of education, mm -hmm. we got uh, education from uh, other uh, teachers, and uh, most probably uh, those students didn't uh, uh, like they they were more uh, focused to become teacher dependent by their teachers. So they became like uh, like sick. They, like, they became like uh, ill uh, in this uh, behavior. So we are kind of uh, trying to healing them uh, to be make them become uh, like autonom autonom autonomous. So okay. What, so as so teachers, <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I can uh, ask this question this way. Uh, as teachers, as practitioners, as uh, I try to imply that in my presentation, every teacher from the very beginning of the teaching, uh, I mean, uh, at the uh, lowest level, the primary level, and uh, in the other levels. Uh, this kind of activities should be integrated in the program so that the students uh, might, uh, yes, uh, improve or develop their own autonomy. So in the meantime, uh, in, in the period, okay, when you uh, come to university, you uh, got some kind of accustomed to a uh, way of learning. I mean, uh, yes, spoon fat, uh, way of learning process. So uh, this kind of attitude might be, um, yes, might be changed, should be changed at the very beginning with the help of teachers and maybe uh, with, the, uh, with some changes in teacher education, maybe uh, there might be some uh, changes in uh, teaching processes, teaching uh, practices. So uh, that's uh, maybe uh, how helpful. Okay, uh, Talib, thank you very much. It's a, it's a very good question. If I get you correctly, I mean, Talib just simply, I mean, indicates a very subtle point that is in our students somehow fail to develop ability to take control of, of their own learning independently. So what, so this, I mean, either because of the uh, learning, teaching and culture, so th there's a kind of barrier that we have to overcome, but uh, it's not easy. So it's a, it's a very, uh, let's say, uh, big handicap in front of us to overcome, to go beyond this uh, barrier. And when they come to the university, so they come to university with the old habits they have developed over the years, which might be quite um, challenging and difficult and uh, let's say, and to break. And thank you, Tyler. But again, we have to start somewhere. So we have to develop a kind of, uh, let's say, the ability. But I think the first thing to be done to change the mindset, our approach. So let's uh, cooperate and collaborate with our students. And also, so we help them to have a kind of insight into their own learning process. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Talib uh, and uh, Raj Tojum. Uh, any uh, further point to make, uh, contribution? Uh, so there's a long, uh, uh, Rash, can you, uh, Erzan, can you read Nalan's uh, uh, message? Of course, Hojam. In fact, I think this autonomy issue starts from the very early period of life, like first month, especially when conscious or deliberate actions begin. Um, as long as a person finds a chance to try and fail and learn from these, they can improve autonomy for those who may not have an 
enough chance to experience such autonomy, bright side, brain keeps developing throughout life, which provides an opportunity for us to develop autonomy, hear the teacher or nurturer's role in action. She says, Yes. Teachers. Okay. I mean, yes. This partly also summarizes what I was trying to say. So, uh, also, it's a cultural issue that we need to to address. It's not easy. There's a long way to go. I mean, uh, yes. because yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Nalan. Uh, yes. Thank you for your contribution, Nalan. Yes, as you see, as you. Uh, also state it's a long way it's not a simple single uh, step to take but uh, a lot of steps need to be taken so as to uh, manage that manage to be an autonomous learner and as for uh, yes our part to be an autonomous teacher thank you Apparently, there is no other questions. Rashti, can I ask you a question? I mean, how do you know whether someone, I mean, a student is autonomous or, or not? I mean, is there a kind of rubric, a kind of yes. survey yes. questionnaire? Yes, so, uh, Hojam, there are some. Uh, I also uh, plan to integrate, I, I, I also plan to uh, show you some part of those kind of inventory scales. So they are available uh, inventory scales so as to measure your student's level of autonomy and uh, one of which I also use my MA thesis. And uh, also there are some others to, yes, there are other, other tools to measure your, your students' uh, perceptions, uh, their perceived level of their own autonomy or uh, you can also um, measure their readiness level. Uh, so there are some available tools so as to uh, get an idea about their level of autonomy. Just, just, just one follow-up question. I'm sure to dominate this session. I mean, oh. are there are there any inventories or any survey, any scale, which uh, can measure? uh teachers autonomy i mean wh how do we know whether teachers are, are autonomous okay so uh, when i have a look at the uh when i have a look at the tools uh, that are used for uh measuring um learners autonomy level uh, the teacher's tool, uh, I mean, the, um, uh, the tools focusing on the, uh, yes, uh, measuring the level of teacher's autonomy level, okay? Uh, they are like um, uh, this, okay, let me give an example, for instance, a t item, an item, okay. Uh, an item in uh, a tool, in a tool and an inventory, Okay, it's, uh, designed for uh, teacher autonomy. Okay, as a teacher, I, uh, an item, okay, as a teacher, I uh, <laughs> let my students to uh, give their ideas um, in terms of preparing uh, a task. So here, uh, in uh, in inventory, so the students are uh, asked to rate uh, which of the uh, tasks uh, are considered as responsibility of teacher and which are the uh, activities are belonging the part about themselves. So uh, it is converted. And it is also uh, asked to teachers who is uh, responsible to this task is. So this kind of questions are available in the uh, inventories. Uh, so they are like counterparts. I mean, the question is asked uh, to a student and the same question is asked at, uh, in a different uh, way to teachers, but the same um, topic, the same idea is presented uh, 
in most of them. So here the idea is that, so we know that the uh, autonomy is a personality construct. So uh, yes, we have some uh, tools so as to measure the autonomy level of students and of learners and teachers, but at the end of the day, we are dealing with some uh, yes individuals. So uh, it is not so easy to say that this is totally uh, measuring the level of, of students or teachers. But uh, we have within the uh, limitation of uh, yes research uh, so as to make the process scientific, we should uh, need to limit the issue with some, to some items. So uh, in the sense, in that sense, we have some reliable tools, but Again, as I said, you, this is something about individuals, about humans, person. So it's not so easy to say that uh, it is totally uh, enough to say that or to measure someone's autonomy or some uh, I mean, teachers. Russia, I mean, they are avail available and reliable resources to be used. Uh, I mean, right now, I mean, the, the point I'm, I'm hoping to arrive at is that, and since the teacher uh, uh, remains uh, the key uh, element the, mm -hmm. uh, that is positioned to promote learning autonomy, but if he's not independent of the, the curriculum, the syllabus, the text, textbook rights, mm -hmm. and the well established and practices, how is it possible for any teacher and um, to promote autonomy? So I think, so I mean, it's not the, the, the, uh, the right place to answer this question, but again, this, this is a very interesting question because it is a teacher who can make this happen. But if the teacher is not in a position, right? If a teacher is not independent of the mm -hmm. things I just listed, so how, it is likely that this could happen to us. Uh, so uh, anyone else? Yes, as, as I try to uh, present it in my seminar, I also stated that the entire system should support this uh, kind of uh, way of learning, autonomous learning. So uh, school authorities and education policies should also assist learn teachers so as to be autonomous. But as I said, you uh, this is a kind of issue also uh, bounded with some social norms, some cultural norms. So uh, these uh, uh, this is uh, coming from literature. Um, produced in different countries. So as a teacher in teaching uh, Turkey, so depending on these conditions, depending on the limitations we have, uh, we have also some space to uh, act. So uh, within this uh, framework, we can do something. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Fat, just there's a message I need. I, I'm desperate to uh, not answer, but respond to. And uh, Fatma, you know, and, and you were a wonderful uh, student and uh, an MA student, and also I'm sure you're a wonderful teacher. I follow you, and uh, from internet, you've been doing a very good job. And you are a great teacher. You, you are a great and a person full of love and kindness. Thank you very much for your very beautiful uh, message. Yes, thank you, Fatma. Thank you, Fatma. Hocam, yes. There is a question. Rashidu Hocam, what might be used for primary school students? What might be used? So uh, they are so active and they are so uh, independent users of technology. So I presented some Web2 tools, uh, for instance, in the part uh, gaming and gamification. So you can integrate technology so as to help them to construct their uh, own tasks, own uh, yes, activities. So you can integrate technology so as to help them. 
And for instance, as a simple way, you may ask your learners to take some roles as well, some, uh, for instance, some dialogues, being a teacher and a learner. So you can uh, ask them to make some groups so as to perform uh, as they are a teacher, as they are researchers. So these are all uh, possible by uh, giving some uh, suitable activities, suitable, I mean, suitable uh, for their level of learning, level of proficiency. Yes, technology may help you in this sense. So, uh, Rashdi, you're saying give them choice, give them options among yes. which they can find their way out. Okay, so yes. let's, let's give them choice, let's give them options Definitely. that they will decide, they will feel, mm -hmm. they will experience what works with them among the choices. But if they are not given the choice, if they are given the options, so they will never know what works for them. Yes. Okay, Simply, thank. we are trying to help them to be aware of how they are learning in better ways. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, please, I mean, the, the platform is yours, so feel free to ask any to make any contribution in in any language. Uh, so I don't want to be rude to anyone. So I want to give options and choice to all people here. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. You may write, you may take your uh, microphones. <laughs> Are options available? All and options also available. the message appears at the bottom, at least on my screen, please. I mean, fill the, uh, uh, click the link uh, to obtain the certificate of attendance. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, let's wait for a second and then, uh, so we'll say goodbye to all people and thank to all people. Forgot big DVDs because they cut up. Any any contribution? Uh, Nigel Jam. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, we thank you all. Um, I have a very simple question. Can any student in the classroom become Autonomous learner at the end of the road. A student in the class. Hmm? So, um, as I try to uh, imply at the very beginning of my uh, presentation, uh, learner autonomy is a concept uh, that is about uh, actually out of class learning. But again, towards the, uh, yes, uh, yes. In this era, okay, we uh, are trying to make use of them uh, some uh, ways that I try to present here. So as to help them to become autonomous within the uh, limitations of uh, classroom, but these ways might be helpful for them to be autonomous learner uh, throughout their learning process as well. So they can take uh, similar ways so as to proceed on their own uh, in and out of the class as well. So as a teacher, we should uh, encourage them to use these ways in class and also out of class. So uh, in this way, we might help them to become autonomous learner. But at the very beginning, I try to make a distinction between what learner is, what student is, and uh, learner autonomy is about being a learner, not student, because student is uh, in a way confined to the classroom context. Okay, uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, all what I want to say, maybe. Maybe you can uh, share also your perspective about this, Najat Hoja. it's a very tr tricky question because in the classroom, yeah, because I mean, so since uh, autonomous uh, learner, I mean, in the case somehow uh, outside the class, but again, there's no universal accepted definition of autonomous learner because it's a culture uh, bound it's and culture term. 
So we may, I mean, we, we can discuss the degrees of being autonomous, to what extent you are autonomous, full autonomous, half auto, autonomous. But again, autonomous, to my understanding, I mean, does that necessarily mean that you are alone and you make decisions on your own all the time? You know, it's a kind of, it's a kind of getting involved in uh, making decision process. It's a, it's a kind of uh, being in the game. So it's a kind of, uh, cooperating and collaborate, collaborating with the teachers. So teachers support and help, I mean, are always needed in this, uh, let's say, let's say business. But again, uh, so if we fail to develop a kind of ability to take the control to some extent, so it's okay, I mean, to receive help from a teacher at any time you want, that doesn't mean that we are not autonomous, but again, it's you who decides when to receive help from the teacher, in what sense, in, in, in, in what amount. So you see, I mean, it's a, it's a matter of, to me, getting involved in your own learning. So you have a, you have a say, you have a thought, uh, you say something about your learning, it's a kind of reflection inside, it's a kind of journey into your own learning. But I, I always, I mean, I, I'm a bit optimistic, so, a teacher can do something about increasing the awareness of the way they learn, for example. They may feel, how do I learn? But not, not see you in your, for example, what works. So if, if, I mean, they try to, little by little, step by step, question the way they learn, the way they acquire the things. So they may become, uh, let's say, autonomous to some extent or independent or the degrees they can decrease the dependency level on the in teacher, but receiving support and help from the teacher when, whenever they are in need of help. But thank you very much, Najat Hojam, uh, for, you for your question. You're welcome. Uh, uh, any any uh, further remark points? Uh, There's one interesting I, I, I want to read uh, from Sumay. Yeah? So I think being autonomous is not necessarily being individual. I think students in, in, in the, uh, can be autonomous as groups. It's, it's another an, an, an perspective. Uh, okay. Well, Jeff, until now, COVID-19, uh, none is aware of the importance of autonomous. Uh -huh. So, so this is an area of uh, interest for research, uh, uh, Rashid. So, yes, I mean, so the need, I mean, the importance of, of, of autonomy in learning, so uh, has been once more understood and appreciated uh, under the shadow of COVID-19. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, it was uh, no, already... Uh, no yes, at the very beginning, at the very beginning when we uh, come back to the uh, years of its origin, we, you, we saw that it was originally suggested for the adults and this was um, conducted, I mean, autonomous learning environment was conducted through the uh, yes, idea of call centers or uh, yes, uh, in this time, again, we are um, away from our institutions and students are away from the uh, institutions and they have a kind of opportunity to improve themselves by the help of uh, computer assisted language learning. So yes, we can say that uh, now Hocam. they can make use of opportunities. Yes, uh, Charu. Hocam, can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Hocam, first of all, I want to thank you for this uh, great and informative uh, presentation. And I want to say, Turgaja, Allah analı babalı büyütsün. And after these good uh, wishes, and I want to continue with the question. I cannot add much to your presentation, Ojam. Uh, that was very inf informative, and you touched on 
uh, every point uh, about autonomous learning. And I want to just make some comments and uh, conclude with a question. Yes, Hocam, please. as you all mentioned, uh, there are some cultural aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, learners think that there should be an uh, authority in the classroom. There should be auto an authority in their family and they have to obey the rules uh, provided by those uh, authorities. And mm -hmm. also uh, parents uh, think like that. Uh, parents always say, says that, say that, uh, Hocam, we are not the authority in uh, the, the classroom and we don't, uh, we, we don't have any power uh, to make uh, our child to study and you should help us uh, as an authority. And I just want to ask uh, that, how can we exterminate these cultural aspects, Hocam? Uh, how can we eliminate those uh, aspects which uh, badly influence the learner autonomy? Yes, I uh, also try to touch on that issue by saying that uh, being autonomous can differ from culture to culture, from society to society to society. So as teachers, the, by considering the social norms, cultural norms, uh, you can uh, make use of uh, not maybe all of these ways, but uh, you can pick up uh, some of them which uh, you found as a teacher in your own, according to your students' uh, own uh, learner differences, your own teaching context, you may find some ways uh, as practical and as useful for your own context. So as a teacher, you are the decision maker and you are the uh, real figure. Uh, so you can uh, take your own decisions. Because okay. you yes, are- uh, Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. So you are uh, getting, uh, you are experiencing uh, even something new in uh, a different class with different stu students in one class, they are different. Or when you go to another school in another city, there might be also uh, some other uh, students with other differences. Uh, so uh, depending on the conditions, depending on the situations, you should uh, find the, the most useful way for your students among these uh, all of these uh, practices, I'm sure you may find something suitable for your students. For instance, uh, language uh, advising. So uh, you may uh, have some uh, sessions with your students so as to help them to proceed. Learner training, for instance. So here, as you see, again, your uh, interventions uh, will be helpful. Okay, thank you Ojan. very much. Yeah, thank you very much for, for your you. great comments, Ojan. Thank you. Thank, Charlie, you. thank you very much for the question. Your question is very critical, but there is no easy answer to your question, unfortunately. It takes a long time, but just one simple answer may, might be, let's share some of, our, some of our authority we have with our students. And uh, I see Nurtaj uh, is raising her hand. Hocam, uh, can you hear me, Hocam? Yes, yes. Hocam, I can hear you. <laughs> uh, hocam, uh, in fact, uh, I want to uh, point, uh, uh, I want to make a point. As teachers and learners, we are all experiencing uh, being autonomous or not on because we are away from our schools, our teachers, our institutions. Uh, uh, so we have to be autonomous, have to be autonomous both learners and teacher. In fact, I want to tell an experience, uh, my experience last year, uh, for the first, yeah, in my life for the first time, I, am the, I was the teacher of language classes, uh, 11th grade. I, I was very really enthusiastic, also my learners uh, were very enthusiastic because uh, we, are, uh, we are very uh, willing, we were very willing to, uh, studying uh, or testing or making other exercises to uh, pass the university exam. 
and until COVID-19, uh, March 14, I guess, uh, until COVID-19, uh, after uh, all schools closed and teachers and students uh, started to study in their homes, my students uh, were got very disappointed. Hocam, they all they uh, always say, Hocam, we were very unlucky. Hocam, we couldn't pass the university exam. Hocam, how can we? Uh, how could we uh, manage? Or how how could we uh, pass the university exam? Oh, they um, I I try to uh, I try to uh, develop their uh, strategies. I try to uh, tell them you should develop your own learning strategies. You shouldn't you shouldn't owe your success to any institution or any teacher or any course. You should. Uh, create your own success. You should uh, create your own strategies according to your personality, according to your uh, environment. You should create a school for yourself. You should create a classroom for, for yourself. Or you should learn from mistakes. You should uh, design your program. You should or uh, design your materials. I uh, Day by day, I try to encourage them, try to Tell them every week. Every week, I uh, create something new for them, and now they ha they have higher marks. I I believe almost all of them pass will pass will pass the university exam. I believe all of them will uh, will be an English teacher for this year because now they have higher marks uh, from their uh, test. And uh, they now they say, Hojam, I I develop such a strategy. Hojam, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Hojam, I uh, I study until six, and later, Hojam, I develop a vocabulary notebook. Hojam, I uh, I learned vocabulary by studying like that. Even I learned from my students how to uh, develop English, how to uh, how to develop my reading, how how to develop. Uh, vocabulary, uh, vocabulary bank. I mean, uh, their strategies even teach me, uh, taught me something. Uh, I, I uh, re recognize that uh, COVID nineteen and maybe a little, my bit little effort taught them to be autonomous. Uh, unconsciously, they became autonomous. Now uh, they have higher marks, and I believe they will. Uh, be a good English teacher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much when I was listening to you. So I once more understood that we have a very good reason to be optimistic of our future <laughs> because it seems that you're making a uh, big and great change uh, in your students, with your students. And, and I congratulate you on your success. But it's, at the same time, your bitter experience tells us, tells us that how it can be detrimental if a group of students totally, utterly, completely, solely depend on their teacher. So again, thank you very much for sharing your experience. Also, I once more, Tebrik ediyorum seni for the thing that you have achieved with your class. Thank you, Hocam, you are welcome. <laughs> okay. Mutaç senin enerjinle çok daha güzel bir şey olur mu? Thank you, Hocam. Uh, I mean, we, we can continue till morning. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lo lovely conversation we're having with people and friends and colleagues and teachers from other, uh, let's say, in the place and cities. But now I think uh, we need to have and uh, close up the session and saying, and first, Rashid uh, Hocam, you have a lot of stuff and you share with us. And also, thank you very much for your very, as many speakers said, informative. For me, inspiring. I, I, I learn myself. Um, every time I learn something new from all speakers, and this is and what the, this platform means to us, for us. And thank you very much, and for for for the efforts that you made uh, into this in the conference. Uh, and also, I thank all my colleagues and friends and, and the teachers and previous and students. Uh, you are uh, with us and. Uh, it's really kind of you um, to be with us and to make your know, own uh, contribution. And I hope and we'll uh, meet you later. So we'll have uh, Doan Saltash from Arda University. 
uh, with a very interesting topic about uh, about social media, how to make use of so social media in uh, language teaching, language learning. This will be the, the not necessarily the final, but the last, let's say, topic we'll be covering in the following, uh, let's say, seminar. Herkese buradan uh, kucakta olsun selamlar ediyorum. Uh, değerli uh, support team, uh, team A uh, arkadaşlarımıza da uh, canı gönlü teşekkür ediyorum. Onların sayesinde bu teknik altyapıyı, diğer altyapıları yürütüyoruz. Uh, hepinize uh, kucakta olsun selamlar uh, ve hayırlı geceler diliyorum. Görüşmek dileğiyle. Thank you very much. Evet, herkese iyi akşamlar. Görüşmek üzere. Teşekkürler hocam. İyi akşamlar herkese. Zeynep tekrar merhaba arkadaşlar. Kusura bakmayın. İyi akşamlar herkese. <gülüyor> <gülüyor>